Story time from Anonymous. When I was in third grade, Friday the 13th was a huge thing. All my friends would always talk about it. And then one day it was Friday, and what do you know, it was Friday the 13th. So everyone was going crazy and spreading rumors about that day. And I have a huge scary cat, so I try not to think anything of it. And I didn't really listen to any of the rumors. Until at lunchtime when things started to get super weird and scary. I remember my teacher asking me to go give a note to another class. Like for Story time from Anonymous Part 2. So I took the note that she gave me and I went to go find the class. I couldn't find the class anywhere, which was weird, because I knew where all the classes were. So I went back to the cafeteria to tell my teacher that I didn't know where the class was. And when I got there, everybody was gone. It was empty and I couldn't find anybody. After lunch, I normally go to recess. So I went outside to see if they were out there. Still, nobody, not even the older kids. Like for part three. My sister is 27 and I'm 18. We lost our dad a year ago. He was our only parent as our mom was never in mine or my sister's life. Our dad left a good chunk of inheritance money for me and my sister. She instantly blew her inheritance on luxury items like new cars and renovated her house. My brother-in-law wouldn't allow me to stay with them, so I'm currently living with my aunt at her house. I want to become a doctor and haven't picked my branch yet, but I know it's going to be expensive. My sister and I haven't been close ever since she got married to her chronically ill husband who was allowed to make backhanded comments about my dad and mock his illness, then make a scene at his funeral. This was all allowed because he's ill and shouldn't be held accountable for his behavior. I've distance myself but recently my sister kept visiting and venting about my brother-in-law's condition he's been in and out of the hospital for heart problems and a need for a surgery she brought up my inheritance money several times but i ended up cutting the conversation short whenever it was mentioned she then straight up asked if i could help pay for her husband's surgery and she paid back in less than a year i felt uneasy because if i give her the money then there's no guarantee she'll pay it back before it's time to pay for my tuition i'm taking a gap year but i know my sister can't pay that much back and i felt like it would be risking my future when i refused to help she had a meltdown in my aunt's house calling me heartless and cruel with no empathy she said that her husband's health should be priority and i needed to help her because my, my boyfriend and I went to his sister's wedding last Friday. They've always had a strained relationship, but overall, it was a great wedding. We were enjoying the party when my boyfriend goes up to the DJ and asks for the microphone. I thought he was going to do a toast for his sister, but no. He asked me to come up to him, and I was terrified. I remember thinking to myself, he is not going to do that. No way. I take a quick glance at the bride, and she is furious. He then proceeds to propose to me at his sister's wedding. Everyone was cheering for us, but his sister just looked like she wanted to cry. I didn't know what else to do other than say yes. I was crying, but not happy crying. After that, I went up to his sister and was apologizing over and over. She was livid. I felt so sorry for her. I left early and my boyfriend came back to the hotel room at 2 a.m. hammered. And so I decided to confront him. At first he was like, babe, my whole family was there and it was the best time. Until he finally admitted that he did it because his sister had ruined his graduation by announcing her wedding. He used my proposal to get back at his sister. I left the morning after and haven't talked to him since. I don't know what to do. He won't stop calling, but I'm overwhelmed with emotions. Am I the asshole for not wanting my fiancé's grandmother, 98, at our wedding? My fiancé, 30 male, and I, 28 female, are getting married next month. Everything is going great, but we've been having a serious argument about having his grandmother at our wedding. We've agreed to not have kids at our wedding as we want the reception to be a huge party for our adult friends and family with dancing, loud music, and an open bar. However, for precisely the same reasons that we don't want kids there, I don't want his elderly grandmother at our wedding either. I said she can come to the ceremony, but not the reception. It will be extremely loud, and I want it to be a party atmosphere, and she will be extremely out of place. For context, none of my grandparents are alive. Am I the asshole for wearing white at my blind cousin's wedding? I'd like to start by saying that me and my cousin who was blind from birth aren't very close, but we get along well as relatives. She sent me an invitation, though we don't talk as much, but since I wanted to take a break from work, I decided to go. My favorite color is white. I love wearing white because it brings out my skin glow and makes me feel comfortable and confident. I purchased a maxi white dress, nothing fancy, but goes well with my skin tone and wore it to the wedding. There wasn't a big party with many guests, but sort of family dinner and small celebration. I really thought no one would even notice I was wearing white. My cousin and her husband obviously didn't know because no one told them. But my aunt kept giving me uncomfortable looks the entire evening, and so did my other cousin. Once I decided to leave, my aunt pulled me aside and berated me for wearing this color at her daughter's wedding. She said that just because her daughter is blind doesn't mean she's stupid and doesn't know what's going on around her. Basically saying I brought negative energy and disturbed the celebration by having guests noticed and by extension my cousins as well. She gave a lengthy lecture and asked if I hate to see her daughter happy and whether I pulled the stunt because my blind cousin got married before me. I was like, whoa, calm down, none of this... Am I the asshole for not inviting my daughter to my wedding? I, 46-year-old male, am getting married to my fiancé, 39-year-old female. We have been together for three years. I have two daughters, 18 and 19, from previous relationships, 
My fiancé is a very sophisticated person and has very exquisite tastes. She also doesn't really care for young children, and this has created tension between her and my youngest daughter. While our plans have been delayed due to global circumstances, our plans to get married are finally going ahead. It's going to be a very lavish and expensive wedding. Due to the nature of the wedding and my fiancé's preference, our wedding is also going to be child-free. We will, however, be inviting my oldest as she is no longer a child, and because, unlike my youngest, her and my fiancé get along well. However, I didn't realize that my youngest expected to come to the wedding. She tried to tag along with my fiancé and oldest when they were going dress shopping because she thought she was going to need a dress too. I explained to her that the wedding was going to be for adults only and that she wouldn't be attending. She started crying and getting mad which stressed out my fiancé. She has been distraught about this for days and hasn't let it go. My parents came by to visit one day and my youngest told them what happened. When they asked for clarification on the situation, I Am I the owl? Okay, so story time. So basically one time in fifth grade, my dad took me to get breakfast from Dunkin' Donuts. We went there before school, like always. And as we were there, this strange man outside was staring at me and like making faces. Super creepy. We didn't know him or anything, so we walked inside and I was kind of freaked out. I told my dad that I was creeped out by him and he told me that nothing bad was going to happen. Or so he thought. So we got our foods and we ate it. Everything was fine. You know, chill. After we were done, we got up to leave. The man was gone by now, so I felt better and... But then on the way to my school, I saw him walking on the sidewalk. Like, I figured he was going to his house or, like, somewhere else. When we got to my school, no one was outside. It was kind of weird. We went to open the door because my dad was a part of the PTA, so he came in with me. The door, for some reason, was locked. My music teacher out of nowhere ran out and brought us inside quickly. She told us that our whole school was on code red. Uh, scary! And that a man was in our school, so we went inside and I went and hid in the music room. Am I the asshole for not letting my best friend have her wedding on my property after being uninvited? One of my 29-year-old male best friend Carla, 31-year-old female, is getting married soon. It's only meant to be a small backyard type of wedding, but they've been planning it for a few months now, and originally it was supposed to be on my property. They wanted it because it's private, has lots of open space for the reception, a nice view, and the house could be used for them to get ready and stuff. Of course I said yes. She and her fiancé Rick were very happy. The thing is, Carla and I do have a history. We went out on and off in college, but decided to stay friends. Then... I met my wife, we got married, and Carla met Rick, and now here they are. Now, my wife knows I went out with Carla back in college, and she didn't care. Carla still went to our wedding and everything. I never knew if Rick was told or not. It's not my relationship, therefore not my business to say anything, so I never did. Rick found out recently, and not in the best way. Not sure how, but from what I heard from friends is that one mutual friend told him, no idea why, we use to date. Not only that, but apparently Carla said a couple of years ago she was still in love with me when she was already dating Rick. I don't have actual confirmation if that's exactly what he was told. All Carla's told me, am I, the, am I the asshole for not letting a girl check my phone to make sure I wasn't taking pictures of her? I'm at the gym today and I'm walking towards an empty squat rack. Right in front of me is another girl doing squats. While walking up, I briefly noticed that her leggings are see-through and when she bends down in her squats, you can easily tell she's not wearing underwear. That's not my business, that's her choice, but it made me uncomfortable to take a rack that was kind of behind her. I had been waiting my entire gym session for one of these racks to open up and this was my last lift before leaving, so I went ahead and took it. I went through my workout as normal. After every set, I check my phone for 5 to 20 seconds. I track every single set for every single lift in a spreadsheet to know how much I lifted and for how many reps. Sometimes I need to remind myself what I did last week to make sure I'm progressing. Sometimes I'm checking the time or changing a song on Spotify. Tonight specifically, there was a very important basketball game being played, so I wanted to keep up with the score, so I used my phone a lot at the gym. I finished up my third set when the girl turns around, walks up to me with her phone up, yelling, What the F are you doing? Effing perv, stop taking pictures of me. I'm caught completely off guard, but I explained that I'm just taking notes on what I'm lifting and that Am I the asshole for not Am I the asshole for refusing to pay my half of our cancelled wedding? My ex fiance and I come from very different cultural backgrounds. Our families live on entirely different continents. I explicitly told him before we even got engaged that I always wanted a small, low key wedding. I know that his culture have huge, lavish weddings and he told me that this is what he wants. So when we got engaged we had a long conversation which resulted in the compromise that we would have a big wedding in his home country, but drop some of the other aspects of his culture that I wasn't so comfortable with, or did not mesh well with my own culture. This was not a huge amount of customs we were dropping. In fact, we arranged to drop one and alter two so that they streamlined better with my own culture. We were both as happy as possible with this outcome. We began making bookings, reservations, and paying deposits for our wedding. This was all out of his bank account. This is because we did not have citizenship in each other's countries, so it was far less complicated for everything to be paid from one account of the same country. The intention was that after we get married, it would be much easier to get citizenship, and once citizenship was approved, we would merge our finances, and at this point it would not matter who had paid for the wedding, since all of our money would be together. Three weeks. Am I the asshole for?
I'm 19 and my parents are in their 50s. For as long as I can remember, I've been allergic to things like dairy, wheat, flour, gluten, and legumes. Since I was a young child, my parents have completely kept all of them out of the house. While other kids ate breakfast cereals, I ate fish and assorted pickled vegetables for breakfast. While other kids had Lunchables, I had grilled chicken or fish with, again, assorted vegetables. While other kids ate birthday cake at a birthday party, I had an apple. I never questioned this until a couple months ago. I was at my aunt's house for my birthday party and she made brownies for everyone. For me, she took great steps to make them with almond flour and avoided all my allergies. I started eating them and thought little of it until my aunt suddenly looked at me and, in a panicked way, asked me which plate I took the brownies from. I pointed from the one where I got my brownies and she she immediately stood up and told me we had to go get my EpiPen. She raced after mom for it and I sat there scared out of my mind because I had never mistakenly eaten flour before. I noticed my mother calmed her down and then she said that we don't have to worry because she had switched to place of brownies and after all I had eaten the ones made with almond flour. I found this incredibly odd because really why would she swap the plates? That doesn't even make sense but for the time being I let the issue rest. However it didn't sit well with me for about a week and I finally went to get an allergy test. The doctor started with his skin. I'm not Am I the asshole for not donating my vacation hours to my co-worker? My coworker has a sick daughter with severe psoriasis and some other health problems. She used up her paid time off this year and my coworker started a donation campaign at work for her and asked me to donate. I told her I'd think about it, but I wanted to save my days as a few family members wanted to get together this year for Christmas. I also don't know her as well as I do work in another section. My asshole boss released an Excel file of how many vacation days everyone had left, which was visible for everyone to see. Then asked everyone to book the rest of their days. He and some older co-workers started friendly conversation to see if I had some family emergency worth taking that time off for.